What is up guys, it's time for Dylan back at it again with another crypto video. What is up guys, it's time for Dylan back at it again with another electronics tutorial. Once again, we're diving into the Elegoo Uno R3 most complete starter kit in the world. And we are continuing on with lesson number 12, which is all about the DHT11 temperature and humidity sensor. So in this tutorial, tutorial we're going to learn how to use this sensor. It's accurate enough for most projects that need to keep track of humidity and temperature readings. And of course, we are going to be using a library specifically designed for this sensor that's going to make our code easy and short to write. So make sure you guys stay tuned until the end of this video so you don't miss out on any of this important information. As always, first thing we're going to do is pull out the components from our box, which I took the liberty of already doing, so you guys don't have to. We have our El Uno R3. We have our DHT11 temperature and humidity sensor. Looks pretty cool. And we need three female to male wire jumpers. And the way that we are going to set this thing up, um, there's a lot of information here about this sensor. Basically, it's talking about how this is a composite sensor. It's calibrated for digital signal output. Basically, you have temperature and humidity. Uh, the dedicated digital modules, collection technology, and the temperature and humidity sensing technology are applied to ensure the product has high reliability. Very cool and excellent long-term stability. So this awesome little sensor seems to do the trick, which is very cool. Now, where would we be using this? We can see right here, the applications are HVAC, dehumidifier, testing and inspection, inspecting equipment, consumer goods, automotive, uh, automatic control, data loggers, weather stations, home appliances, humidity regulators, all kinds of things you would want to use this for. Just think about Think about devices that you've run into where you need to keep track of temperature. Um, I can think of one that's in this house that wasn't listed. Your thermostat. We need something that keeps track of the temperature to make sure that that fan only runs until we reach the desired temperature in the house. So this thing is cool. We can use it for a lot. Here are the parameters. It's a lot of mumbo jumbo. You guys can read up on that if you're interested. Uh, but basically, what we're interested in is the connection schematic. So it looks like there's three cables. The data cable goes to D2. VCC goes to the 5 volt, and we have a ground. So ground, 5 volt, and the second pin. So the way we're going to set this thing up, jumping back over to our view, is we want this guy to be in the orientation like this, so that if you can see... Like a little looks like a little switch almost see it right there s and a1 i think it says r1 sorry so that side this is where we start from this side it's going to go into the two pin then the middle pin will go into the five volt pin and then this side is the ground pin so we're going to do white for the d2 we will do Brown for the 5 volt, and then black for ground. Pretty simple. Go bango, so we're connected. And we're just going to do, just like I said, uh, white is going to go into the second pin. Bingo, bango. We're going to have brown go into the 5 volt. And the black going to there, just like that. So when you're done, it should look like this. Into the two pin. And then on this side, we get the five volt on the ground. This one's pretty simple. You really can't mess it up. So anyway, jumping back over, what we're going to need to do is open up lesson number 12. So open, navigate to wherever you happen to have your PDF file located. So mine is on the desktop. Gonna go to lesson number 12. Boom, we're gonna open up this guy. And of course, there's an INO sketch file. We open that up, we can close this guy. Let's make this big, boom. And then of course, we also need to include the zip folder 
for the library. And to do that, of course, you just go to the desktop, you go to the same exact spot, boom, boom, lesson 12, and it's right here. Boom, open. So I already have mine in here, so that's why it's not going to work for me. But it should work for you if you guys didn't already upload your code. And now what we can do is plug the sucker in. And start running it. So let's run it. We can see this is what the serial monitor will look like. And that's pretty much it for this lesson. And then maybe we can jump into the source code, take a look to see exactly what is going on. Okay, so uploading the code. So it is now uploaded. Let's click serial monitor. And we can see, give it a second, it's going to start taking the temperature. Looks like every three seconds, 3.3 .3 seconds, something like that. Very cool. So let's see what happens if I start blowing on this thing, right? You guys can see the temperature and the humidity reading, so. Look at that. So it definitely looks like <clears throat> it looks like the temperature and humidity sensor totally works. Very cool. Now let's blow on it. I'll try and cool it down. And there you go. You can see the humidity and the temperature dropping. Very cool, dude. This thing is actually pretty damn accurate. I like how it actually works. <laughs> Very cool. So let's take a look at the source code because I'm sure we're all interested. DHT non blocking dot H. Boom. We'll go to documents, Arduino, libraries, DHT non blocking. Boom. And this right here is the file that we want to look at. So notepad. Bingo, bango. But first, let's look at our setup here. So it looks like the way we're doing this, we're including the library, right? We have our setup for what DHT type it is. DHT type 11, I wonder what that means. We'll figure that out. We have a static constant int, which is the sensor pin. You don't really need to do static constant. You could just do const. And then we have DHT non-blocking, which is the name of our class, right? This is our class, the non-blocking DHT class. We have named it DHT sensor. So this is the object that we're creating. And it looks like it takes, if we look at the code, let me back up to the constructor. Boom, it takes two things, the pin and the pin type. So we have the sensor pin, which we set up here, which is pin number two. And then we have DHT sensor type, which is right here. Type 11. Very cool. And then coming down, we have our setup. All it does is set the baud rate to 9600. We have a boom, a function, static bool measure environment, float, temperature, float, humidity, and bool. So bool means true or false. So this is a function that's going to return true or false, basically, when we call it. And it looks like measure environment. It looks like we're calling that in our loop every single time. So if this thing is true, we're going to print out all this data, temperature, the humidity, we're going to format it to look nice. Oh, very interesting. So the way this works is it's passing. So we have not seen this yet in any of our tutorials, but what this means when it puts the and sign at the beginning, it means that it's passing these variables by the address. So the address, meaning the memory address, it's actual physical address in memory, like on the hard drive. When we're running this code, this particular, these two, um, these two variables here, temperature and humidity, because I was wondering, how are we getting these values, temperature and humidity, if we're not actually returning them from this function? So the way that we're doing it is we're passing them in, right? Because that's what this takes. It takes in temperature and float humidity. The star is what we use to dereference 
and the ampersand is the address of operator. The way this thing works is we have a function that takes in two parameters and will return true or false. Now these two parameters, like I was saying, are pointers. That's really what we call them, they're pointers. Now a pointer means we're not actually sending in the, para the variable itself, we're sending in the address of this variable. So these are vari variables, they live down here. Their address is in memory wherever they are after this code is run. So we create these two variables. When we create these variables, the computer, what is it doing? It's allocating memory space. It's saving its spot in memory. And then it's reserving these names in the code. They call that the big three. And essentially what's happening is when we run this line of code here, we're calling this function, and what we're doing is we're sending in the address of these two variables, right? And the if is if this whole function call equals true, which we would know because this thing only returns true or false, and we're going to figure out how it returns true or false by looking at this code. But basically that's how this works, is it takes in the memory address of these two variables instead of the variables themselves. Very cool. So we've never seen that before in any of our lessons. So this is the first time we've encountered this. Very cool. Okay, so now what does this do? Static, unsigned, long, measurement, timestamp equals millis. What millis does is it is basically calculating the number of milliseconds since the program started, since the Arduino board started running the code. That's basically what this does. Okay, when we get down here, measure once every four seconds. So if... and I mean, technically that's, yeah, technically that's true. Millis minus the measurement time step has to be greater than 3,000 microseconds, which means it has to be greater than 3. What's greater than 3? 4. I mean, technically this is a little inaccurate, but whatever. Okay, then when we get down here, if DHT sensor dot measure, let's see, dot measure. There's measure. So the way you call, so as I've, stated numerous times, the way that we call methods, which are functions that are tied to classes, is that you have to call, first you have to instantiate an object of that class, which we did up here, DHT sensor, and then to call it, you do the object name, dot, and then the, the function name, or the method name. So that's how we do this, if DHT sensor, dot measure, so we're calling this method here, we're sending in temperature and humidity, which are these two right here, which is going to do what? It's going to read non-blocking equals true. What's read non-blocking? Read non-blocking right here. So it's calling, so literally this method is calling another method of this class. And what this is gonna do is, it's gonna return true or false based on all this code here, which we're not gonna go through, but basically it's just checking temperature and humidity. You guys can look through this code or you can run it through chat GPT and it can tell you exactly what it does. I'm not gonna do that. Let's look at all that code. I'm not gonna go through all that. But basically it's calling, when we call DHC sensor dot measure, it's calling read non-blocking, which is basically reading the raw data from our sensor, okay? If it's reading some interesting data, it's going to return true, right? If you come back up, where is it? Measure. So if we do actually read the temperature and the humidity, right, which is boom, what we're talking about here, it's gonna return true. If it doesn't, it's gonna return false. So, boom, if we happen to do this, it's going to measurement timestamp equals millis and return true. But what's awesome is, is because we re we sent in temperature and humidity, we sent them in as the address of those particular variables instead of actually sending in the variables. Every time we utilize them, even in this, we're sending the address of these two variables here into all this code. See, temperature, humidity, read temperature, read humidity read temperature, it's reading all this data, it's gonna return all that back to here, which is the address of 
this variable. So literally this variable, even though we didn't physically send this variable into the into the function or into the method, it's still changing the, the value of these, which is really cool. That's the power of using pointers or sending stuff by reference or sending stuff by its memory location instead of its actual physical name. So very cool. So because if, if we wanted to use these in like a regular type function, the way that it would work is we would need to have two separate functions every single time and return the value every step of the way, which just gets difficult. So very cool that we, we did it this way. If this is not true, if this is not true, it's just going to return false, which is going to break this if statement down here. But the whole time this thing is running, it's collecting the data, it's storing the data in these memory locations. Basically, it's printing out this information. And like we said, it's happening about every four seconds. But when you look at the code, you can see, when you look down here in the serial monitor, we can see that it's a little bit more than three seconds. It's a little bit less than four seconds. So that's why I was saying uh, the four second thing isn't really true. It's just less than four seconds, greater than three seconds. But pretty cool. Pretty cool how this works. And as you guys see, this thing actually does pick up temperature and humidity. When I blow my hot breath on it, it actually works. Pretty cool. That's all I have for you guys today. If you made it this far, you guys are awesome. In our next lesson, I'm pretty excited. We're going to be using the analog joystick. So finally, some pretty cool stuff. I can't wait. I can already think of something we can use this for. Maybe our radar system. Maybe we will upgrade our radar system to allow us to move the joystick to control our radar. Hmm, pretty cool. Make sure you guys stay tuned for that. But other than that, have a beautiful day, beautiful night, wherever you guys are. Dylan is out.